So uh, we're back to our patterns work, um, and we're looking at describing a sequence or a pattern using what we call a function. Now, another name for a function, all right, we have been calling it a, a general rule. Okay. Now, this task that you have just been doing, basically, you have just used three different, this was level one, you've used three different function machines. So this is what we would call a function machine. You'll see it in the textbook when we get there, uh, describes it. But what we would do, what we are going to do, is we're going to look at lots of numbers, like the one and the four that goes through this function machine, but we're going to look at a whole table of numbers and only one function machine. Whereas in this task, you have lots of function machines, all right? So we're going to change it slightly. The so what? What? So let's look at this. How would we describe this level one? Well, this one here, we can say, so for you guys, maybe you can write out this first one. So I'm going to write it underneath. We're going to say we've got an input, okay, and the first operation, the first part of the function is to multiply that by 2, all right? Once you've got the answer to that, we then add 2, right? And we get the answer, well, we get what's called an output. Now, in this case, we had a 1 and a 4, all right? So the input was 1. We multiplied by 2 and got the answer 2. We then put 2 into plus 2, and we get the output 4. That's what we had, right? Yeah. We had to determine what these were using the information that we given. So the thing that wasn't there was this intermediate number here, all right? But we do have the input is the number that you put in, all right? And the output, I'll use a different color, that's what I intended. Uh, the output is the result, okay? So the output being four. So we've got a two part function machine here. Now, with this task that you've just done, we didn't look at any other inputs. But what if we were to do other inputs, like 2, 3, 7, and 12? All right? What would the outputs become if we use different inputs, but with the same function machine? Uh, it could be... Not could be, oh. will be... 16. So 2... Oh. Two. Times 2 is... 4. Six. Plus 2 is... 6. 6. 3. 8. 8. Oh, I see the pattern. Eight. 7. 16. 12. Okay. Now, we did that very quick, quickly. I'm, I'm very aware of that. I've got people shouting in my ear telling me the correct answers. Is there anyone not quite sure where those outputs have come from? Yeah, so two, two times two makes the four. Then four plus two makes the six. Three times two makes... Six. Six plus two makes eight. Seven. Oh, the six. Uh, seven times two makes fourteen. Fourteen plus two makes twelve. Times two is twenty-four. Twenty-four plus two makes. So how I think of it is the core is two. So it's two, and then you it's times. Yeah. It's itself times two, and then you add the four, which is two. 
Yeah, so Charlie was linking us back to... You right there, Chrissy? Yeah? Charlie was linking us back to the um, the core stuff, the patterns yeah. and experiments that we were doing before, which is great, because we are looking at still that kind of material. Okay? So does that... Is that okay with how we're using a function machine? Yeah? Now, what I... So it's not in the textbook, so I'm going to go a little bit further with you guys, because I'm pretty sure you can cope with it. What if I were to generalise? So I'm going to say General. the word generalise, I use an S, you might use a Z, that's up to you. But if I say N, okay? If N is the input, what would the output be? So I don't want the same, don't stand up. Can everyone take a moment? I would think, what do you think? I'll pause the video. So, if I put n through, I'm going to do n multiplied by 2, and I will get a result. But I don't write n multiplied by 2. The result would be 2n. I then take two n's and I add two to it, and that becomes my output. So it becomes 2n plus 2. And there's my rule. Yeah. If, if you, now, don't write 2n plus 2 equals n, because it doesn't. That's, 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 that, that would make sense. That's like saying 3 times 6 equals 3. Oh, right. Yeah. It's not yeah, possible because it. it has to be bigger than three. Because you've done something to it, right? If it's multiplying it's by something that's more All right. than a power. Now this, by the way, for those of you that are writing your notes, so these, so this is the input that goes in, this is the output, these things here that I've written, right? These are, and it become more and more familiar functions. to you, functions that are applied to n in this case. So if I say the input is n and the output is 2n plus 2, these things here all right, are the functions that get applied to n. And when you get a few years on, you start using what's called function notation, you'll get to hear it, I'll say, oh, f of x or f of n and what I mean is f, f the function that has been applied to x the function of x so don't need to worry about so that now it's just an introduction three. but you will get there and it's just another way of communicating right how are you feeling about that have you written everything down you need to yeah. yeah cool right what we are going to do next then this is from the textbook, so we'll do a couple together. Um, we've got a couple of levels. First level is just to try and determine um, whether it's... The question in the book says, A, is it a linear pattern? Yeah. All right, is the question for each one. Okay? And can we fill oh, no, the no, gaps? No. Right? And then I'm going to say, this is the extra, if it is linear, can you give the general rule? All right? The function machine. So we're going to look at the function machines. All right, and we're going to look at this, right? Can we write the function as a function machine? And then some of you might be able to write the general rule at the end, only if it's linear. All right? So let's have a look at this first one. All right? What do you, do you remember what it means to be linear? Um, it doesn't change. I wouldn't accept that as a comprehensive full answer. I know what you mean, but... I want to expand on it a little bit. It's kind of like 
like straight, like it doesn't, like, like it has the same wool. Why? Max? It always changes by the same amount. It always changes by the same amount. Yeah, I think that's what you meant. Communicating thing. What about this one then? The first one, Cora, does it change by the same amount? So I'm going to write this one, I'm just going to paste it down here. You um, can copy this one into your book. You don't need to draw out the lines of the table, you can just put input, output. So we're now looking, look, we've got the input and the output, and we're trying to figure out what goes in between. All right. But first of all, is it a linear one? What do you think, Cora? No. No? Well, look, if I go one up in the input, what happens to the output? It's adding plus four, plus four, plus four. Now, just because I jump to a hundred doesn't mean it's not linear. What would five be if I added five? It would be plus four. It would be plus four. It would be 20. From four no, to, so, yeah. to be 20, yeah. Aaron, what would six be? What would seven be, Alyssa? No? Chrissy? 28. You not say it, Chrissy? No, we've just, not Chrissy, Alyssa. We've just added four on each time. Now, yes, Maddie. Does the next one would be 32. Yeah, so eight would be 32. Now, some of you have noticed, I think, already that if we put one in and the output is four, and we put two in and the output, you probably already spotted that there is a single function that is being done. What is it? Times four. Times four. So we can put in a times four. And we should just check, does that work with all of them? So two times four gives me eight. Does that work? Yes. Yeah, we're good with that. Um, seven times four gives me... 28, so we're good there. Okay, we've done a few checks. So, would anyone like to have a go at what you think? If n is the input, what's the correct output? Cora? Um, so, which one is 4n? So, this is like 4n uh, plus 1. No. Just the 4n. Yeah, because that's all we're doing. There is no plus four. Those other ones are a little bit more complex than this one. Okay, does that work with the hundred? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, you may well notice the keen eyes amongst you that the plus four every time has related, look, to the times four in the machine. Because we've talked about, like Charlie was saying, that's the core, isn't it? Adding four on every time. So we have one lot of four, two lots of four. And in this case, there's no add or subtract afterwards. Aaron? And because it's adding four, four after, it's the one more total than the last one. Yeah, one more lot of four than the last one. Yeah, that's right. Have you? <laughs> So we add four, we've got three lots of four has been added on and so on. Okay, so over to you, if you've written those down, hopefully you did. So for B and C, all right, maybe I think B's, okay. First of all, can you spot the button? Can you carry it on? Plus two. Can you figure out what the machine will be? Nope. Can you give me a general rule at the end? Okay, go for it. Let's, uh, are we ready?
goes because I'm recording, so if we can hear you talking over me, then it's recorded on video. Yeah. Right, uh, let's just do uh, this next one. So, do you think it's linear? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What does it go up by? Two. So plus two, plus, plus two. two, so four is the next one, so it's plus two, which is eight. Now, then we've got our input, output. I've left the hundred one until after I've done the general rule. So if one goes in and two comes out, and two goes in and four comes out, and Three goes in and six comes out. Now, it could be plus one, but does that work here? No. no. So plus one is not the option. So we go with the other one is times two. And it works with all. And that works with all. Okay? It's the and the, for those of you that are making these links, you would start with times two because of the plus two there. Then. Now it might not seem to make sense well, why plus two and then times two, but that's what we're trying to repeat. We're saying, well, it's add two lots of times. How do you repeatedly add two? And multiply by two. I've got one lot of two, two lots of two, and so on. All right. Now the last one that we are going to look at. All right. There are plenty of others, so next lesson you'll be able to do for yourself at your own pace. Um, this one, make my space and my notes look good when I'm trying to study from them. Is this the right time? What? Is this the right time? Is it appropriate? Are you desperate? Well then, no, this is not the appropriate time. Right, so, what do we think? Is it linear? Okay. Yeah, why? Right, good. So it's plus one, plus one. Oh, I didn't finish the other question, by the way. We'll go back to it in a second. All right, plus one. So that will be nine. Okay. So, so let's do our inputs output let's work out our function machine so if one goes in and six comes out potentially it's plus five or potentially times by six which one because two to seven is plus five so we'll forget that times by six and we've got plus five Okay, now, so just to finish off the, the two questions then, so that means if I'm going to put a hundred in, I'm then going to add five, and it's going to be one five, so that's going to be, okay. If we go back to this one, we've decided it's multiplied by 2, so if I put 100 in, times 2 gives me 200. Okay. So that's where I'd like everyone to be at. Are you there, Corey? Yeah, is that why you were hitting Sophie? Because you like celebrating. Feel free to move if you'd like to. Right, just to finish this off then, well, for this one, if the input is n, what's the output general rule? 2n. 2n, good. Because we times by 2, so 2n is the general rule. And then if we do c, if the input is n, we've got plus plus five, the output dash. Oh. 
Y2N. Well, the reason why you said that, I think, is because you've lost focus from one question to the next. You're still in the 2N. 2N's got nothing to do with this one. We've got plus five, who would like to tell me? Oh, Sophie? It's not 5N, but I understand why you've said that. Alyssa, would you like to? It really is simple as you put N, you do this to it, what comes out? You write? N plus five. N plus five in this case. Now, guys, just to make it clear, look, we have a plus one every time. How many N's do we have each time? Plus one. One. One N, then plus five. All right? So although we don't write a one, it's kind of there because we multiply n by the one. In the other case, plus two, so it's two n. Right? Now this one could, although we don't do it, we could write, instead of just plus five, we could write times one and then plus five. That might make it look a bit more like the other things that we've been we've been working on. Okay. All right, but we don't need to. Okay, we'll do more practice. I can see Max highlighting on Aaron's book and Aaron messing around with you. Now that's in my video. It will be out there on YouTube and Sophie's going to ask all her fans to watch it. All right. Next lesson, I'll give you some practice on the rest of them. Okay.